Hello friends. In today's lesson, let us learn about nuclear force and its important properties. We know in a nucleus, neutrons and protons are bind together. The force that binds together neutrons and protons in a nucleus is called the nuclear force. Since all the protons are positively charged, there must be some kind of electrostatic repulsion between them. But even then, the nucleons are held together in a nucleus. So, the nuclear force must be strongly attractive. So, the first important property of the nuclear force is that it is strongly attractive. Then, since protons and neutrons are both present in the nucleus, this attractive force must be present between both protons and protons, neutrons and neutrons and protons and neutrons. So, irrespective of their characteristic, all the nucleons are bind together by this nuclear force. So, here you can see the force acting between different protons and neutrons. Everybody is held together by this nuclear force and it is strongly attractive in nature. And this force is present between everyone, between proton and proton, proton and neutron and neutron and neutron. Now, this another important feature of the nuclear force is that it is effective only at short ranges. We can see that the nuclear force is applicable only at a distance of about 10 raised to minus 15 meter, which is the radius of a nucleus approximately. If the distance is greater than this value, then the nuclear force will not be acting. This distance in within which the nuclear force acts is called action radii or range of a nucleus, nuclear force. So, ten, approximately 10 raised to minus 15 meter is the action radii. Now, there is an important theory which relates the, which finds the theory of this nuclear force and the theory is called meson theory. According to this theory, the exchange of pi meson is what binds together the nucleons in a nucleus. Let us listen to one example. Here you can see the image of two dogs fighting together for a bone. The bone is actually holding together these two dogs. Both the dogs are clinging on to this bone and wherever they go they will be together just because they are trying to exchange this bone or trying to cling on to this bone. And just like that, just like this bone binds together the two dogs, wherever they go, the exchange of pi meson between the nucleons is binding them together. And the meson theory explains the nuclear force as the exchange of pi mesons between the nucleons. Now, let us find the range of nuclear force using the meson theory. For this, we will be using the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You know the Heisenberg's uncertainty, uncertainty principle given by delta x into delta p which, is, which should be greater than or equal to h cut. What is h cut? h cut is h by 2 pi where h is the Planck's constant. So, h cut is a new constant which is equal to h by 2 pi. So, this is the uncertainty principle that you have learned in your school. Now, let us learn a new Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This same equation can also be expressed in other variables. So, let me write delta E into delta T should be greater than or equal to h cut. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle can also be stated in this, in this term, in terms of energy and time. E is the energy and T is the time. 
So delta E into delta T should be greater than or equal to H cut is another form of expressing Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So let us use this principle to find the action radii of the nuclear force. Suppose the rest mass energy of the pi mesod is m. Then using Einstein's relation, we can write delta E equal to mc square. Now applying this Einstein's relation into this Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, what should be delta T? Delta should T should be greater than or equal to H cut by delta E which is equal to H cut by mc square. So this is the equation for delta t. Now if we assume that the velocity of the pi meson is around the order of c, approximately equal to c, then what will be the distance travelled by the pi meson? Its velocity is given to you which is c and time is given to you which is h cut by mc square. Then in order to find the distance travelled, the distance is velocity into time. So you have to multiply h cut by mc square with c, time into velocity which is equal to h cut by mc. So this should be the total distance travelled by the pi meson. And the distance travelled by the pi meson should give you the action radii of the nuclear, nuclear force. So we can write the action radii R0 is approximately equal to H cut by MC which is approximately equal to 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter. If you substitute the values of M and other constants you can find the constant R0. So this is approximately the action radii or the distance that the pi meson can travel. And we can see that this final value that we get here agrees with the prediction of 10 raised to minus 15 order within which the nuclear force acts. So pi meson theory actually goes hand in hand with the other theory. Now let us move on to other property of nuclear force. Nuclear force is charge independent. So that means the, the attractive force between proton and proton, the nuclear force between proton and proton, a proton and a neutron and neutron and neutron, all these are equal. Irrespective of their charge, the nuclear force is acting between them. So this is an important property of the nuclear force. Whatever be the constituent nucleon, the force is seen. Now another important property is that nuclear force is the strongest non-force in the nature. What are the other non-forces? There is grab the fundamental forces are the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force. Among these four forces that fundamental force forces the strongest force is the nuclear force the strong nuclear force which binds together protons and neutrons in the nucleus now the last important property of the nuclear force is its saturation property this means that nuclear force are limited in range each nucleon interact only with a limited number of nucleons nearest to it. So here you can see if we pick this particular nucleon it will be interacting only with some amount of neighboring nucleons not with all the nucleons in the nucleus. Similarly each nucleon will be interacting and attracting the neighboring nucleons alone and that property of the nuclear force is called saturation property. A proton will not be exerting attractive force on all the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. It will be attracting a limited number of nu nucleons around it. Similarly, every other nucleon will be attracting a limited number of nucleons around it. 
So this effect is called saturation of nuclear forces. So these are the important properties of the nuclear forces. I hope you understood today's lesson. Thank you.